The Kirby franchise is often shown in lighter, happier tones. However, that typically means that someone will come along in the story to try and ruin it. Thankfully, Kirby and his friends are there to stop them. Kirby's newest adventure on the Switch, Kirby and the Forgotten Land, fits right in with this formula. And that got us thinking, which characters in the game are the most noble and heroic, and which ones are downright vile? I'm Kyle with 1UP Binge, and this is Kirby and the Forgotten Land characters, good to evil. As usual, we'll be starting with the most good character and working our way down to the most evil. These characters are the good, and our gold medal for most good character goes to Elphalyn. Elphalyn is literally the good half of another character we'll be talking about later, so it seemed pretty simple to rank him here. He's Kirby's ally throughout the game, and he was actually already doing some good before Kirby arrived in his dimension. Before Kirby showed up, many others from Dreamland were already there, including a lot of Waddle Dees. When Elphalyn noticed that the Waddle Dees were being captured by the Beast Pack, he did everything he could to help save them and fight off the pack. He did this all while trying to avoid being captured himself. When he does get captured, he quickly gets saved by Kirby and aids him on his adventure, including granting him his power during the final fight. After reuniting with Kirby later, he helps Kirby with traveling between dimensions at will. His selfless acts and how much he was willing to sacrifice solidifies him earning the gold medal of good. When making a good to evil list of Kirby characters or any Kirby list in general, you have to include the hero himself, Kirby, who earns our silver medal of good. Kirby, for the most part, is the definition of what a hero is. He's selfless, doesn't give up, goes up against anyone who poses a major threat to him or his friends, and so much more. In this game specifically, Kirby, like the other Dreamland residents, gets brought through a dimensional rift to the world of the Forgotten Land. Without even thinking twice, Kirby immediately starts exploring the area to find out what's going on. This is all done while he quickly starts rescuing Elphalyn and all the Waddle Dees that were captured. Upon Elphalyn explaining to Kirby some of what has happened, Kirby once again leaps into action to save everyone, regardless of the dangers involved. He's never met Elphalyn before, and he hasn't fully grasped the weight of the situation, but he still acts selflessly and helps everybody that was attacked by the Beast Pack all while he helps rebuild the town of the Waddle Dees. Next, we have a particular Waddle Dee that many more people will recognize, the Bandana Waddle Dee, who earns the Bronze Medal of Good. This Waddle Dee has appeared in quite a few titles. In this game specifically, he's shown to want nothing more than to assist Kirby on his quest, regardless of how dangerous or life-threatening it will be. This includes going up against King DDD and other various big enemies. Equipped with his spear, he's always ready to charge into battle. When he isn't actively helping Kirby, he'll remain in Waddle Dee Town, always prepared to go and help Kirby should he ever call upon his aid. Other than that, he can sometimes be seen befriending some of the other Waddle Dees while he waits. And speaking of which, the general group of Waddle Dees in this game are up next. These are all the Waddle Dees that were captured in the story of Forgotten Land. It may be Kirby and Elphalyn who saved the day most of the time, but that doesn't mean the Waddle Dees don't contribute. Upon being saved, every single Waddle Dee expresses gratitude before heading back to their town. They also help Kirby in some ways after being rescued. As more and more get rescued, they're able to rebuild more and more of their town. As they do so, they construct buildings and businesses that can ultimately help Kirby more and more as he gets further into his adventure. Not only that, but without them, Kirby may have never been able to win against the big evil of the story. Each primary boss in each world is secured behind a locked area. After Kirby rescues enough of them, they will immediately go over and unlock that area. This allows Kirby to progress further and rescue more of their kind, resulting in them being able to help even more. The fact that they're willing to run back towards the very beings who captured them just to help Kirby out shows a great sense of nobility. Next, we have the wise Waddle Dee. This particular Waddle Dee, for the most part, looks like any other Waddle Dee, but don't let that deceive you. He is actually very informative. While most of what he tells you could be tossed aside, the useful information that he gives to Kirby to aid him on his quest is what stands out. The most noteworthy of which is his information on blueprints that allow Kirby to evolve his copy abilities. While he doesn't tell you exactly where in a level it is, he will still tell you which level it can be found in, as well as other pieces of useful information to narrow down where the blueprints could be. 
since the evolved copy abilities are often stronger than their previous counterparts. Having the evolved versions for things like boss fights can help Kirby progress much easier. Having someone help Kirby find the blueprints for them so he can have an easier time fighting is a huge sign of goodwill on the wise Waddle Dee's part, especially since he doesn't ask for anything in return when providing this useful information. Next, we have the Delivery Waddle Dee. This is an interesting case for Waddle Dee in that he will give you free items and bonuses, but you have to give him a specific code for it to work. As long as the code is valid, the Waddle Dee will have the gift sent to Kirby's house pretty much instantly. Fast service for free items that you would have to pay for elsewhere. What more could a pink puffball ask for? We now move on to the game shop Waddle Dee. The Waddle Dee provides Kirby with a minigame off to the side in Waddle Dee Town that can be either fun or challenging. The only problem he really has is how he rewards you with coins, which are the very thing you're paying him with in order to even play his games. As it gets harder, it's likely you'll be spending more money in order to bring the Kirby Ball to the end, meaning the prize money won't be as big of a win as if it was completed on the first try. This Waddle Dee makes us think of real-life game vendors of similar nature at amusement parks. Many of them will try to get you to fork over as much money as possible to try to complete a very difficult challenge, often making the end prize practically not worth it if the player ever really does win. Our next entry is the Weapons Shop Waddle Dee. After you find the blueprints for evolved copy abilities, whether it be on your own or with the wise Waddle Dee's help, you can take them to this Waddle Dee. If you have the blueprint for a certain ability, as well as all the needed resources and money for it, this Waddle Dee will make your abilities more powerful than ever. We might have ranked him above the wise Waddle Dee if he also didn't charge for services, making Kirby do some fetch quests of sorts to get the necessary items. That said, the fact that he is willing to put in all the work to make Kirby more powerful is a sure sign he's on the side of good. Moving on to the item shop Waddle Dee. This guy falls in a similar category to the Weapon Shop Waddle Dee in that he provides you with some sort of boost for the right price. The main reason he's slightly lower is because of what he sells. Yes, it's true that he gives Kirby boosts to things like attack, speed, or health, but these usually only last for a certain amount of time, not to mention that only one can be carried at a time, though that's more so on the game and what it allows Kirby to do. Next, we have the Cafe Staff Waddle Dees. These two are similar to the item shop Waddle Dee in that they give you special items, for healing you in this case, that you can either eat immediately or take with you. These items can definitely help Kirby out in a pinch as long as he can fork over enough money. What puts them a bit under the item shop Waddle Dee is their minigame. Yeah, it definitely can be fun for the player to see how well they do, but they're making Kirby work by himself to feed a bunch of hungry Waddle Dees. And this gets even worse during the lunch rush. And still, Kirby receives no help. The last two Waddle Dees we have to talk about are the Commentator Waddle Dee and the Usher Waddle Dee. These two can also be found in Waddle Dee Town. While their businesses are quite different, they're both there with one goal in mind, to entertain. The Usher Waddle Dee allows Kirby to go back and watch any important moment that has happened in the story up to a given point. And the Commentator Waddle Dee provides commentary as Kirby goes into the arena to go up against various opponents. The Commentator Waddle Dee could be argued to be a little bit more on the good side due to him giving Kirby rewards after completing the cups. This includes really rare figures, a large amount of coins, some rare stones, and even a blueprint or two to upgrade certain abilities further. Aside from that, these two Waddle Dees fall into a similar category. Our next character is a fan favorite, Meta Knight. In the context of this game, Meta Knight can be seen as a strong, skilled, and willing hero and protector. From the player's perspective, it might at first seem like Meta Knight just appears out of nowhere and picks a fight with Kirby once he walks into the arena. The story dives a little bit deeper than that. It turns out that Meta Knight had been brought to this world a good while before Kirby, as evidenced by how he was able to explore the entirety of the land before Kirby got there. While this was all happening, the big antagonist of the story tried to possess Meta Knight, but his sheer force of will was enough to keep it from happening. As Waddle Dee Town gets rebuilt, Meta Knight shows up at the arena and hangs around that area from that point on. Some people wonder why the Beast Pack don't attack Waddle Dee Town as it's being rebuilt, but as a matter of fact, they do. However, it's apparently mentioned that Meta Knight might be protecting the town when Kirby isn't around. He does fight Kirby in the arena, 
but this fight is optional, not to mention that Meta Knight doesn't appear to have any evil intentions behind this duel, but rather, probably just wants to test his skills. He even allows Kirby to have a sword of his own, making the playing field as even as possible. We now move on to a group of newcomers to the series, as well as another very familiar face, introducing the Beast Pack bosses. This set of bosses includes the likes of Wild Edge, Wild Bonkers, Wild Frosty, Florina, Goromondo, Claroline, Silly DeLeo, and their leader, Leongar. And yes, even King Dedede. This may surprise some people who haven't played the entire game yet, so hear us out. Yes, it is true that all these characters are bosses that fight against Kirby, and that they're head honchos in the Beast Pack, which are the ones kidnapping all the Waddledees for certain benefits. But there is an explanation for this. This game's ultimate villain, who we'll talk about in a bit, had actually taken control of all the animal-like creatures in the titular Forgotten Land, making them all do their bidding. This ranges from basic enemies all the way up to the bosses in each world. After they're all defeated and snapped out of it eventually, they stop doing bad things. Claroline, for example, even saved Elphalan the very character she was trying to capture when controlled. The credits even show the Beast Pack becoming friends with Kirby and the rest of Waddle Dee Town. It is true that Kirby has to fight Leongar more times than the rest, but at that point, it was more because of the big villain acting like a sore loser and possessing him. In DDD's case, since we're only ranking him in the context of this game specifically, he gets to be ranked with the rest of the Beast Pack since most of what he does in the story of Forgotten Land was against his own free will. DDD also gets a few bonus points for heroism. After defeating him as Forgo DDD, he, Kirby, and some Waddle Dees try to escape as a group of Beast Pack characters still being controlled attack. When DDD looks behind and sees one single Waddle Dee trip and struggle to move, he runs back while Kirby holds the door open. Realizing he won't have enough time to get both of them through, he throws the Waddle Dee through the door just in time. He then pulls out his hammer as the door closes, ready to give his life to save Kirby and the others. He's seen in photos at the end with the rest of the heroes, showing that he thankfully made it out of there okay. With the good area wrapped up, we actually go right past the gray area and enter the dark side. These characters are the evil. Taking the silver medal of evil is actually a tree, Tropic Woods. Since this tree-based boss has made his debut here and is a different variation of Wispy Woods, we're going to talk about this character solely in the context of Forgotten Land. You could make the argument that Tropic Woods should be in with the other big bosses of the game, but we have our reasons for placing him here. For one, this boss isn't actually part of the Beast Pack, most likely due to being a plant and not an animal. Due to this, we aren't really given any clear indication that Tropic Woods is being controlled by anyone or anything. Yet, he is still seen with some captured Waddle Dees when Kirby approaches to free them. Upon getting closer to the Waddle Dees, Tropic Woods wakes up and attacks Kirby immediately keeping him from saving the Waddle Dees without a fight. It's due to this sequence, along with seemingly no confirmation, that he is being controlled, that we're keeping Tropic Woods in the evil category for now. But finally, we get to our winner of the Gold Medal of Evil, Fecto Forgo. At the beginning of the list, we mentioned how Elflin was the good half of a character, whose name is Fecto Elfless. Fecto Forgo is the bad half of the same being. As Fecto Elphilus, they had the power to travel through rifts to other dimensions, which they would use for not so good reasons. After being captured, it split into Elflin and Fecto Forgo. Elflin escaped, while Fecto remained in stasis. After waking up, Fecto saw the residents of Dreamland coming through a rift. Once they had control over the Beast Pack, Fecto had them capture Waddle Dees as a power source for them. They also managed to seize control of DDD. The same was almost done against Meta Knight, but he was able to resist. Fecto is also a bit of a sore loser. After Leongar loses to Kirby, Fecto directly possesses him and fights Kirby using Leongar's body. Upon yet another defeat, Fecto chases after Kirby and Elphalan. While they couldn't catch Kirby, they do absorb Elphalan, allowing them to become Fecto Elphalus once again. After losing to Kirby yet again, Fecto decides to open a rift in hopes of having that world crash into planet Popstar, and vice versa. Kirby, with the help from the newly refreed Elphalan, stops this from happening and defeats Fecto Elphalus. Or so it seems. Their spirit was what remained, now known as Soulforgo. Still not giving in to defeat, Soulforgo creates a bunch of phantom versions of previous boss fights Kirby had. In the process, they shattered Leongar's soul so that they could control his body. After Leongar's soul is restored, 
Sulforgo still isn't done, as he controls Liangar's mind, making him fight Kirby once again. Upon losing yet another time, Sulforgo is about to fight Kirby on their own, when a butterfly comes in and absorbs them, creating Morphonite. Kirby still manages to come out on top, which causes Sulforgo to reverse the absorption, and then absorb Morphonite's power for himself, vanishing afterwards. This still isn't the end though. When participating in the Ultimate Cup Z in the Colosseum, Kirby and Elphalin have discovered that Facto Elphalus is still alive. Having absorbed the power from Morphonite, they become a being known as Chaos Elphalus, acting as the penultimate foe of the whole game. This is where they make their last stand. As Kirby defeats them this time, they dissolve away into particles. To put an end to Fecto Forgo, Elflin absorbs one of said particles. Considering all the nasty things Fecto Forgo did, including controlling almost everyone Kirby faced in the game, capturing almost all the Waddle Dees in the area, literally shattering the soul of another, trying to destroy multiple planets by having them crash into one another, and just being responsible for practically all the bad events that took place in the game. It's pretty obvious that Fecto Forgo deserves to be ranked as the worst of the worst in Kirby in the Forgotten Land. But let us know what you think. Do you agree with our ranking? Let us know in the comment section below. And if you need a one up, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can binge more of our Kirby videos. Thanks for watching.